maybe you were sold th- this message a long time, and, and a lot of times it just goes like this, that if you, if you say this magical prayer, it's almost like an incantation of sorts, right? You just got to say these words in the right order. And if you just say these words out loud, then no matter how you live your life, you're good. Because, because God, what he's going to do is, 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 is he's just going to save everybody at the end anyway. So we can do whatever we want. We can act whatever we want. We can speak whatever way we want. We can, we can do whatever we want. And I just love you enough this morning to say, yeah, that's false advertising. That, that, that's something nice and flashy on a box, but that's not the substance of Christianity at all. And I'm excited this morning because this morning as we get into this text, it might be a little bit bumpy at times. Uh, James is, is, is the kind of speaker, right? He wrote this book. He's just constantly getting up in our faces, right? Like, like he, he's, he's just kind of hitting us with these really hard truths. And today he's going to uh, lead us into something very, very important. And it's ultimately the question of what does it take to be saved? Like, what does it truly take to be saved? Turn with me in your Bibles. New Testament book of James, if you're not there already, chapter 2. We're going to be in James for a bit. Then we're going to leave James, and we're going to go over to Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to look at what his big brother Jesus taught on the exact same message. You guys with me this morning? All right, here we go. James chapter 2, starting in verse 14. He says, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? All right, there's the question, right? Like, like this is a big question. James is basically saying that if there's somebody who, who says that they have faith in God, but their life doesn't show it in any way, are they saved? That's a big question, right? Like, like, can simply just a profession of faith alone 20, 30, 40 years ago, can that save someone? Just putting the right words in the right order, is that the substance of what God wants from, for our lives? And, well, he's, he's going to answer this question to do so. Let's keep reading. He's going to give us an illustration. Verse 15. Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them... Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Those are strong words. J- James wants to answer this question. Like, what is, what is the root of salvation? How does this work? And, and he says, let me, let me give you an example. He says, let's just pretend that you come across a brother or sister. Now, this language, he's actually talking about people in the church. In the church. And he says, so suppose you come along somebody who, who's just lacking the essentials of life. They have no food. They have no water. They have no shelter. The picture is they're going to die. And you see it, and you say to them, that's a bummer. Hope you figure that out. James says, man, what good is that? Like, what good is that? It's no good in the same way faith divorced from action, he says, is dead. Now, I said this last week, but I need to reiterate it this week as strong as I possibly can this morning. James here is not saying this is how you get saved, right? He's not saying um, just do more works, love more people, help more people. And if you just do enough good things, then you'll be saved. That's not what he's saying. He's not saying this is how you get saved. He's saying this is what saved people do. He's not talking about the root of our salvation. He's talking about the fruit of our salvation. He's talking about, he's talking about the very substance of faith. And he says it's, it's action. It's 
love for, for, for the poor. I mean, James has been hitting. This is the third week in a row. We basically come to the same thing. Poor, broken, hurting people. That's what it looks like to be a Christian. To be, to be ministering aid and care to the most vulnerable groups around us. But if there's no care, if there's no love, if there's no action, James says right here, I don't care how much you say you love God, your lack of action betrays you. He says your faith is dead. Now, I was trying to figure out, okay, how do I illustrate a dead faith? I thought about pulling in a casket, then I thought that's going to freak some people out. <laughs> so I didn't. I didn't. I decided I'd go with a mannequin. Um, I've used mannequins in the past. Mannequins are fun. We just happen to have several at the church. Don't ask why. Um, here's the thing about a mannequin, right? They, they have the appearance of life. They do. They, they just, they, like, like the, the, the whole design and purpose of a mannequin is that it can actually come as close as possible to looking like one of us, and yet it's not one of us. Right? Like, like it has a, a hand. This is wearing shoes. This, this nice mannequin's even sporting our nice apparel. Find hope, find home. Buy your sweater today. Okay. <laughs> In fact, I think we're all sold out, so don't go try to buy your sweater today. It's the appearance of life, but it's dead. This mannequin, no matter how long we sit here and wait here and stare at this, there, there's no heart inside, and, and there's no blood inside, there's no organs inside, there's no soul inside. It has the appearance of life, but inwardly it's as dead as the stones outside. James is kind of pulling this picture to write, basically just to say, listen, for those who said a prayer 20, 30, 40 years ago, but there's no corresponding action or love from God in your heart for the broken, needy people around you, you're a mannequin. You have the appearance of spiritual life. You've, you've got the shell, but inside you're hollow. This is the difficult message that James brings. See, James, man, he's, he's not wanting any false advertising. He, he's, he's, not, he's not wanting you to, to buy into some weird greasy grace message. No, he wants to give us the substance of our faith. And, and that is action. It's the very obedience to God. And in fact, this is so important. James, he's, he's, he's going to double down here. Let's keep reading. Verse 18. He says, but someone will say, you have faith and I have deeds. I love this. James is ready for a fight. He said, all right, all right, church. Someone's going to argue with what I'm saying right now. Someone's going to say faith and deeds, faith and works aren't correlated at all. There, 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 there's, there's no connection between these. These are two separate things, right? But what, so watch what he does. He says, show me your faith without deeds, I, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. <laughs> I love this. I, I, yeah, um, have you ever been in an argument or a debate with somebody and you're holding the trump card? Right? Like you've got the ace in your back pocket. You have something to say that is so good that you know the moment that you say it. It's like, boom, game over. Checkmate. I win right? James is holding the trump card here, okay? He, he's got the ace in his back pocket, so he says, all right, let's, let's, let's talk about this. I'm going to show you my faith by what, by, by what I do. You think you can show me your faith by what you know, so let's take a test. What do you know? What do you know? You believe that there's one God? Yes. You believe that he's the creator of the world? Yes. You believe that he sent his son Jesus into the world to die on the cross and raised life? Yes, yes, yes. And James says, good for you. And then he throws down the trump card, right? Right here. And he says, you want to know who else has that amount of faith? The demons. You want to know who else believes that? The demonic. He says, congratulations. So far, your faith is on par with demons. Good for you. 
So let's ask the question, what separates you from a demon? That's a fun question, isn't it? (laughs) Think about it. What is the difference between you and a demon? Okay, now, now that, that's a loaded question. There's probably many differences. But the one that James is hitting here is action. That for the person who truly puts their faith in Jesus Christ, it will actually change the very way that we live. We will help the poor, the lost, and the hurting. Ain't no demon doing that. You understand? That's the difference right there. I, I, I love this. And James, you know what? He, he's still not done proving his point. One more time, man. He just, he's he's going to bang this drum like all day long. Uh, go with me. I think we're in verse 20. Is that right? In verse 20. He says this. You foolish person. <laughs> just, just brace yourself this morning, okay? You, fool, you person who thinks that faith is somehow divorced from action, that these are two separate things, foolishness. He says, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? He's going to prove his point here. He says, was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. Skip down to verse 25. He says, in the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. All right. To prove his point one last time uh, about this correlation between faith and works, James uses two stories out of the Hebrew scriptures. Right? And he says, all right, church. He says, remember Abraham? First one, remember Abraham? Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had... Okay, if you didn't grow up in church at all, you're lost. (laughs) You're just like, what is happening right now? Right? Like, Abraham, okay, showing up in this text, right? The father of the Jewish faith showing up in, in this letter from James to a Jewish first century church should not surprise us. But Rahab? Are you kidding me? There's no, there's no song about Rahab the prostitute. Anybody here know the Rahab the prostitute song? Anyone? No, because there isn't one, right? But James uses both of these stories to cover the spectrum, right? Abraham, father of the faith, Rahab, a foreign prostitute to show what real faith looks like. And he says, all right, let's talk about Abraham. Remember when God told Abraham to go sacrifice his son on Mount Moriah? And he actually went to go do it? picked up his son, brought him up the mountain, laid him on the altar, was about to sacrifice him, and God said, no, 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 I've provided a ram in the thicket and said, he says, remember that? Remember that it was his faith and his action that partnered together that God said, yes, this is a man that I can trust. This is a man who will be obedient. That's real faith. And then he says, all right, remember Rahab? Remember in, 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 in the book of Judges when the spies were going into to Jericho to scope out the land first and they got there and, and, and people found out and the whole city was in an uproar trying to find them and Rahab, a foreign prostitute, hides them. Hides them and says, I know of your God, the one true God. Uh, James says, it was her faith in God partnered with her action that saved both her lives and these men. This is James' point. He's, he's stating not just that faith without works is dead, but that their obedience, I want you to hear this, their obedience, Abraham, Rahab, it was their obedience that actually proved that their faith was real. It wasn't just their words. It was their obedience that became the substance of their faith. 